what I was learning when I first started studying was that like nothing else matters unless you have your health and unless you're happy. And if you have, you know, if you don't have those things, then what is your life? And it really made me look back on the last couple of years and not one moment of those two years could I say that I was truly happy because I was so focused on the end goal. And I was like, no, when, when this business is big, then I'm going to be happy. I just have to struggle first. You're listening to the Live Life Longer show with Dan Voss, inspiring you to live longer through the cold, the hot, breathing, eating, and being nature. In this week's episode, my guest is Phoebe Webb, a qualified nutrition and health coach helping time-poor women in business take control of their diet and lifestyle so they can thrive in work and in life. Phoebe, welcome to the Live Life Longer show. Thank you so much for having me, Dan. It's so good to be here. Yeah, I'm super happy that we connected. Um, it looks like you know a lot of the, the work that you're doing in the health space um, really aligns nicely with uh, topics that I cover on on this podcast and some of the guests that I've had on this podcast. It yeah, sounds like you so. uh, align pretty nicely there. So yeah, um, yeah, definitely. With that being said, I'd love to hear your story of. Um, how you got to where you are today. I understand that, you know, not too long ago you had, you were in a situation where you were trying to run your first business that you had, as well as a, a part-time job working really just a, a loaded schedule of, of nonstop work. And that led to, to burnout. Um, so maybe you can share that story a little bit further and, and how that led you to where you are today. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, so in it was a few years ago now. It was 2016, really, that I kind of started my first business. Um, and that was something totally unrelated to what I'm doing now. So at the time, I was so passionate, and I still am, um, really passionate about um, the fashion industry, creating like sustainable fashion and stopping fast fashion and all that kind of stuff. So... What I really wanted to do was to support um, Irish design. And so my first business was creating an e-commerce website that sold contemporary Irish design. So, you know, not your traditional Aran sweaters and things like that. Um, but it was very contemporary stuff. And I ran that for two years while I was also working like a day job. So mm. I would do my paid job and I'd come home and I'd go straight into building my other business. And so for two years straight, I worked every single day, every minute of every day. And mm. I like when I look back, I, I know that I did everything I could to make that business happen, but I, I almost did too much. So when I was building that business and and I knew it was stressful and I knew I was tired, but I didn't quite realize how much that it was affecting me. And so much so that, you know, even the smallest of things would upset me. The smallest of things would make me angry or irritated. Um, my, like, I call them OCD tendencies, but I don't think it's really the right way to, basically I'm a neat freak and I need things in certain places in certain ways. Um, mm -hmm. And that got really bad, like to the point where I was living with housemates and they would leave something somewhere and I would get irritated, like seriously irritated by it. Um, and it just wasn't fair, like my attitude towards things and people then wasn't fair towards other people and stuff. And yeah, it got to it got to a point where I knew I was having to make a change, but I didn't want to because I was so stubborn and I was so determined mm -hmm. to make this business work that I was willing to like go to the ground with it and make it happen. And bearing in mind, this business didn't make me any money. So for two years, I was doing this. I was working my day job every single like cent that wasn't spent on things like rent <laughs> was going yeah. on this business. Um, I got a loan to pay for things. I ended up doing like freelancing work as well on top of everything else just to get more money mm -hmm. to fund this business. And 
it was just an insane amount of time. So naturally, I hit burnout, obviously, um, and I was chronically stressed. Um, I like I would usually weigh like I've always been quite a small person. So I would usually weigh between eight and eight and a half stone. Um, I don't know what that is, actually, with you. Well, how do you you've measure kilograms, is it? In, over there? For, for weight? For weight. Uh, pounds. Pounds. So I don't know what yeah. that is in pounds. But I'm not sure. It's, it's you know, it's small anyway. And yeah. then I lost the stone, so I went even smaller. Because I was forgetting, I, I wasn't even thinking about eating. Like, I would come home... And when I was supposed to have my dinner, I would go straight into working and it could be like Mm. 10 o'clock at night. And I would realize that I was hungry, but instead of eating food, I'd keep working and then I would go to sleep. So it, yeah, it got to a really kind of bad point. And I decided, I kind of half decided to close the business. I had done Mm. like this kind of course and I just kind of, it made me really realize that it just wasn't working out no matter how hard I tried to, to build it. And mm. I kind of have, I had like a bit of an eat, pray, love moment where, <laughs> where I booked a flight to Lisbon uh, for five days on my own. Um, I went to, I stayed with a friend, um, but she actually ended up getting the flu the day that I got there. But oh, no. I feel like the universe was kind of, you know, telling me something because it meant that I actually had to spend all that time on my own for the five days straight. And I booked myself into yoga classes and I was just crying in the yoga classes. And the teacher Mm. was so sweet and she was like, this is totally fine. It's totally normal. And I was like, (laughs) Um, (laughs) and I was just kind of like, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to close the business. Like, I'm just going to have to do it. It's not working. It doesn't matter how much effort I put into this. It doesn't matter how many hours I put into this. It's not something that's working for me. So I came back. I... I had moved home by this stage. I had moved back home and I just stopped the business. And mm. I, the weight that came off of my shoulders when I did that was amazing. And I thought that I was going to feel really crap. And I actually felt quite good. And it was the first time in ages that I had felt good. And, um, and then I didn't really know what to do. So I... I got like a piece of paper from a notebook and I just wrote down the things that I enjoyed doing that I hadn't done for like the past two years. Um, And simple things like I love cooking, baking, um, going for walks, listening to podcasts. Um, I had all these kind of like small things that I just wanted to focus on. And I was kind of lucky enough that I could be at home so I didn't have to go and find a job. My dad was like willing to put up with me for a little bit while while I kind of figured things out again. And that's kind of what I decided to do. And so I started focusing on that. And then eventually some, some freelancing work kind of came my way. And I was talking to, I was assistant styling and um, styling to somebody and she, I was talking to her about, you know, how I was kind of trying to sort my life out and trying to heal myself. And she mentioned this course um, that there's uh, from the Irish Institute of um, Health and Nutrition. And mm. I just looked it up and I was like, this is exactly what I need to do just for me. I was like, I need to learn this stuff. I need to know how to look after myself so that this doesn't happen again. And as soon as I started studying, it was like, I just fell in love and I found my passion and I was like, I need to tell everybody all this information I'm learning. And I was like, how did I not know this before? And when I was telling it to some people, they were like, I've never heard of that. And, and it was amazing. So what kind of first kind of came out of me trying to just help myself, um, ended up being something that I really wanted to, to pursue then as, as a career. And that's great. I kind of thought, you know, I was like, okay, I'm not going to push myself again like I did with my last business. Um, And so I was thinking that I was going to have to like work part time and maybe do this on the side. But then the pandemic hit last year while I was still Mm -hmm. studying. And so when I 
finished, I there was no jobs. I, you know, I was applying for things and nothing. And I was like, I, well, I have no choice. I'm going to have to make this my career and I'm going to have to make money from right. this because nothing else is coming up. <laughs> yeah. and it, so it was a bit of a blessing in disguise, really. Yeah, it's, um, I think everything you shared there, it resonates with me quite a bit. I was in a spot to, um, you know, starting up a business a few years back. I, uh, I started a wedding photography business in 2017 oh, and same thing i was working you know, full-time job and then starting uh you know my, my business um on, on nights and weekends and i absolutely experienced burnout and um i'm lucky that i you know i i, I enjoy the work i can enjoy the creative work of photography but i'm really happy that i've found um a passion in this podcast and around the health space and there's something really neat when you do discover that for the first time um, mm. and it just like clicks right there's just something about it that you can just feel inside of you that it's it feels right and it's meant to be and then you start making connections with all these other people in that same field or that same area and um, it's just something really special about it so I, yeah. I think your story resonates with me a lot and hopefully it resonates with some of our listeners as well yeah it's a great space to be in because before like with the fashion stuff. Um, now I met some great people totally um, that I still keep in contact with today, but it was very hard. Like even in Ireland, like we're, we're a tiny country. We don't really have, we don't have a fashion industry, but yeah. you know, it's, it's tough. There's this kind of like click kind of um, grouping kind of situation. And, and it was really, it was really difficult. And I was relying on a lot of other people as well at the time. Whereas with this, it's, it's me, I'm relying on myself mm -hmm. and that's it. And that makes everything so much easier. And even the people that I meet, you know, like people like yourself, you know, there's that instant kind of connection when your kind of beliefs and your philosophy around life, um, when you share those, it's mm. you can have some really great and interesting conversations with people and you can just yeah. learn so much and what i was learning when i first started studying was that like nothing else matters unless you have your health and unless you're happy and if you have you know if you don't have those things then what is your life and it really made me look back on the last couple of years and not one moment of those two years could I say that I was truly happy mm. because I was so focused on the end goal. And I was like, no, when, when this business is big, then I'm going to be happy. I just have to struggle first. And since starting this business now, my coaching business, since day one, I've been so happy doing it. Yeah. You know, obviously I've I had my it. moments as we all do, but it's it's been I, I like the fact now that I have something com to compare it to because I know what the other side of the coin looks like. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I'm with you there that if we don't have our health and our happiness, it's like, what do we have? You know, you have to get that health piece down first. Um, if you just look at your life holistically, it, you know, you have your all the different areas of life, which is health, your finances, relationships, business and career, mm -hmm. um, spiritual life. If you don't have some of those core pieces down around around health and happiness and fulfillment and spirituality, um, it's going to make it really hard to succeed as a business person or in your career or mm. have healthy relationships with the ones that you love. If you don't have that down first with yourself, yeah. um, I'm a big believer in, you know, you can't have, um, or I should say, the relationships that you have with with others will never be as good or better than the relationship that you have with your yourself. Mm. And that just goes down to, you know, it comes down to self-care and making sure that you're taking care of yourself first so that you can thrive in the other areas of your life. Yeah, totally. And it rubs off on people. So if you're someone, like I was saying before, when I was totally stressed out and my OCD tendencies were kind of going through the roof and I was annoying yeah. everyone, like, the way I was feeling inside was rubbing off on people and in yes. a really negative way. And now that I'm feeling so much better, I can see that rubbing off on people too, because people tell yeah. me even after a conversation with me and it's so sweet and I really love it. And I feel a bit like cringy saying it, 
But people genuinely say after a conversation with me that they feel so much better. And I haven't given them any advice and I haven't done anything with them yet. Um, yeah, but even awesome. just the conversation is uplifting, which is really nice. Yeah. And I, I think we've all been there too, where we've had periods of our life where we're stressed out, we're burnt out, um, we're just not happy with some area of our life or many areas of our life. And when you get into that frame of mind where you're just like constantly down or crabby or upset, that absolutely rubs off on other people. Um, and I, I've been there before. I, I, I share all of this with personal experience where, um, you know, if you look back at, if I'm looking back at my life, you know, two to three years ago, um, I wasn't always the friendliest person. I wasn't always the most patient person. Um, I might have been upset or like gotten really irritated over the littlest things. And that affects the relationships that you have with other people. And I will say, you know, in this last year, um, amidst all of the craziness that we've all experienced and the challenges that it's brought us, um, I actually think in the last year, I'm the healthiest and happiest I've ever been. And a lot of that comes down to what we were talking about is that self-care piece. Um, and it feels good, right? It feels good when you can look at yourself and, uh, in the mirror and, and realize like, yeah, I've made some really good changes in my life and it's, and it's having a real impact on myself and the relationships that I have. Um, so yeah, I think a lot yeah. of what you're sharing resonates. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. It really does. It starts with you. And, um, like a lot of my clients would be mothers. And so, you know, naturally their intentions are to look every, after everybody else first and then they put themselves last. And mm, yep. I just have to remind them that they can't do that as efficiently and as good as they could be if they're, if they're not looking after themselves first and to really put an importance on it. And I think some people either they need reminding of that or they actually need permission to do that. Sure, sure. Yep, 100%. So I, I would like to cover a little bit more on the work that you're doing with the clients that you have. Um, we have talked about, you know, being in a stage of life where you might experience burnout or even just like general busyness. Um, it's very easy to get into that rut where you you have a lack of energy and motivation and productivity and even creativity. Um, and even like this past week or so, I was we were talking about you and I, um, before we hit record here, we were chatting a bit and I was sharing with you how I feel like in the last like, couple of weeks, things aren't like fully opened up again, but I can sense that like urge and that, that need of people really wanting to get back to normal. Um, and I feel like I'm just, uh, my schedule is filling up quickly with meetings and podcast recordings and mm. um, just seems like there's a lot of projects that are in the fire, which is great. I'm, I'm excited about so much for this year. But this past week, I, it's, it's been kind of busy. And, uh, you know, for instance, working out, like I usually try to work out three to four days, maybe five days a week. This week, it's now Wednesday, and um, I haven't worked out once this week. I think I've worked out once in the last week and a half. Um, so what I'm getting at here is tell us a little bit more about uh, the work that you're doing with your clients as it relates to burnout and that lack of energy and productivity and motivation mm, yeah it's it's funny that you say that because I'm having like the exact same week um because I'm doing this launch now of my program and and I mm -hmm. knew I was going to do this I've had this scheduled in since last month so I knew right. this week was coming and so I've kind of prepared myself to not do my workouts to not go for my walks um things like that, because I knew it was how busy it was going to be. And this yep. is kind of what I work on with clients is that you're not going to ever get this like perfect routine that you can do every day, because, mm. you know, that's just not how life is. It throws things at us. Um, some things don't happen the way we plan them to. And we have to kind yep. of cope with that. So but as long as we're looking after ourselves most of the time and we have some sort of routine most of the time, then we're much better equipped to deal with weeks like this, for example, or a day like this um, and to not get frustrated with it and to not get annoyed mm. with ourselves and to think like, well, that's it then, you know, I've had one bad day and I'm going to throw in the towel. 
Um, so when I kind of first start with clients, like they come to me because they, they're at a point where they're starting to think long term, which is always really great to hear because the work I do with people, it's, it's not short term work. And then they go back to, you know, it's no kind of fad diet or anything like that. Mm -hmm. It's learning sustainable changes that they're then going to continue to do after they've worked with me. Um, so they've hit a point now where they're thinking long term and they're like, if I don't make changes now, then I'm, I know I'm going to suffer. So mm -hmm. they initially come to me, I think, for diet reasons. You know, they want to figure out their diet. They want to be eating healthier, things like that. Um, and when I start kind of talking about the holistic approach to health, looking at their, not just their diet, but looking at their lifestyle, looking at their stress management, um, mm -hmm. looking at their movement. And they're always kind of amazed. They're like, oh, yeah, no, I, that makes sense to look at those things, actually, because they come hand in hand. You can't sort out one part of your life and not the other. Um, right. So I kind of show them that by doing one thing, it kind of resonates with the other. And mm. just some stuff that they would never have even thought about and yeah, so we kind of work really holistically with things and take a look at what's going on everywhere. So a lot of these people now, because they're so busy, they rely on things like drinking copious amounts of coffee every day. They are grabbing snacks on the go. You know, they're all orga being organized isn't, you know, they're organized maybe in their work, but they're not organized in their life. So then it kind of brings mm -hmm. chaos into the workplace because they haven't prepared a breakfast or they don't have any lunch with them and they're just kind of running around. So by kind of like looking at things like that, by being maybe prepared with your snacks or with your breakfast in the morning, you're actually having that mindset of being more prepared for the day ahead as well. And so they really complement each other. Yeah, I think when it comes to food, what I see the, the biggest issue a lot of people face is just a lack of preparedness. And I've fallen into this often in my life um, where you either you let the like craziness and business busyness of life take over. And because you weren't prepared with healthy meals or um, or eating at all, like like you were saying earlier, sometimes you forgot to eat at, you mm -hmm. know, altogether when you were really busy with uh, managing the business and your job. Um, I think you have to put certain tools in place to, to be prepared for that. When you know you have a busy week, you know, do meal prep uh, on Sunday so that you have planned and prepared meals for the coming days. Um, another big thing I like to do is for grocery shopping, a lot of people say like, oh, it's so hard not to buy chips and cookies mm -hmm. and ice cream. Well, my big thing is like, don't, don't buy them. Don't bring them into your house, right? Mm. Like just go to the grocery store with the list and here are the 10 items that I'm buying. Here are the different fruits and vegetables that I'm getting and um, whatever. Yeah, other, list. You know. A list really helps. <laughs> a lot yeah, of people don't. Have, and... You have to have that prepared. Otherwise you're going to come home with all kinds of junk. So yeah, th yeah, that's my no, totally. kind of two and cents. And it's a learning thing. You know, you're not just overnight going to go, okay, now I'm just this big healthy person and I'm not going to buy any of this junk food. It's, right. it's slowly making those changes and actually kind of sort of in opposite almost to what you're saying is to not buy that food is actually think about so that it's not in the house. I always work with people to, to buy food, so healthy food, you know, fridge essentials, cupboard essentials, so that it is in the house, so that they're not mm. popping to the shop to get something quick. Um, yep. they're not kind of stuck for anything to eat because it's in the cupboard already. Right. A lot of people fail to actually shop um, and they might panic buy and get a couple of bits or, you know, a lot of people go shopping when they're hungry. So they're picking, you know, those frozen pizzas and those ready meals and things like that because mm. they're like in the zone where they're like, I just need something quick now. And they're right. not really thinking long term. And so even by just having your kind of 
basic kind of cupboard essentials and your fridge and freezer. Like a lot of people ask me, like, is frozen food okay? For some reason, people don't trust frozen food. And, Mm -hmm. you know, I think because there's maybe a bit of a stigma around like the the ready meals and things like that, but frozen veg and frozen fish and frozen meat and stuff, as long as it's like sustainably caught fish and it's like free range meat and but it's totally fine when it's frozen. So like one of the things I always have in my freezer is frozen frozen fish, um, like frozen peas, you know, Mm -hmm. and then you could just put the fish in the oven and the peas in a pot and it's like done. So it's it's so simple, but I think a lot of people forget about that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's it's funny you mentioned that. I just started a subscription um, with ButcherBox. I think they may only be in the states, but um, they have you know grass fed, grass finished beef, um, you know, free range, mm. sustainably raised chicken, and and fish. So that's where I get my my protein sources, and of course they ship it uh, frozen. So oh, I have oh, cool. you know I have that in my freezer, and then anytime I. I'm about to make something. I can just pull that out for that for that day and let it thaw out in the fridge, mm. and then I just go to the store for my my vegetables. Um, yeah, because so it's that's fair. kind of my my process. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, it's so exactly. handy, and a lot of people fail to kind of have have that, you know. Um, mm-hmm. And then they're kind of wondering what to eat, and they're kind of looking around, and and then they end up going towards the quick thing, um, the junk food, because they're needing that instant hit of energy. And because I work with really busy people, I'm not telling them, okay, you have to take the whole Sunday now, go shopping, do all your meal prep, all this kind of stuff, because people want to relax on a Sunday and they don't want to have to do all this stuff. So it's, you know, doing stuff that actually suits them. Maybe it's just popping to the shop for, you know, for half an hour, you know, but people think it's this massive deal and it's just not. Um, and getting enough food that they can maybe even prep for like Monday to Wednesday and mm. not thinking about the whole week, you know, that can be kind of overwhelming for a lot of people. But if you just think of yourself Monday to Wednesday, and most of the time you usually have food left over to last you then the Thursday and the Friday. <laughs> right. hundred um, percent. I understand that a lot of what you're working on with your clients is that lifestyle piece, right? Like that holistic lifestyle you talked about, movement and stress management, as well as the food and nutrition. Um, Maybe we can cover those other two pieces, movement and stress management. Um, What are some things that you're seeing with with your clients that um, you're incorporating into their lifestyle for more movement, better movement, getting more enjoyment out of the the type of movement that they do? Yeah. um, So, yeah, I use the word movement on purpose instead of exercise. one because I don't want people thinking I'm like a personal personal you know um, trainer um, who's going to give them this kind of exercise plan. So yep. I use the word movement because it's kind of encouraging people to move, like you said, in a way that they enjoy and in a way that is kind of benefiting not only their physical health but their mental health as well. And thinking mm-hmm. about it in a different way, so it's not. It's not exercise to like get fit and lose weight. It's movement to be healthy and to feel healthier Mm -hmm. and to feel better. And that getting fit and losing weight is just an added bonus that kind of comes with that. Um, And it's about because a lot of people, especially now, a lot of people are still working from home. So we're very sedentary during the day. And I know a lot of people, you know, they sit down for the whole day and then they go for maybe their walk after work which is great um but kind of the damage has already been done because they've been sedentary for like six hours straight Mm. and especially now when we're not in offices and things like that we're not necessarily getting up you know we were used to kind of get up and go to a meeting or get up and go to the canteen or go and talk to somebody or there was a bit more movement when we were kind of in offices whereas when we're sort of at the kitchen table yeah. we're not moving as much and quite often we can work through our lunch and things like that because working from home is a totally different situation to to working in the office and so I encourage movement in terms of you know thinking about you know when you're on the laptop or on the computer you're hunching or maybe you've got like a bit of a crick in your neck or 
um, you know, even just breathing, we, we forget to breathe when we're so busy and mm. we're like taking yes. away and doing all this work, we can actually sort of hold our bodies like solid and not breathe. Um, and just kind of get getting that kind of like flow. So even just getting up and like going up and down the stairs, or if you have a garden, go outside for like two minutes and just get some fresh air and come back in. It's, mm. it's about kind of just moving the body so that you're kind of energized again, and you're kind of trying to keep that brain fog um, from coming and, and yeah, thinking about it in terms of like health more so than weight loss and getting fit. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a big fan of trying to get movement in throughout the day, whether that's going outside for you know a walk with my dog or going over to the park and just doing some jumping jacks and push-ups or you know even in in my in my apartment here, um, just uh, taking short breaks. You know, after an hour of work, stand up or you know if I'm already standing, just start doing some quick movement, jumping jacks, whatever it may be, mm. burpees, right in right in the living room floor here. Yeah, um, because before you, you know it, you've hunched over your laptop for five hours straight. <laughs> yes, yeah, and to the point of working from home, which a lot of people are doing now, um, it's so easy to wake up and kind of roll over and open up your laptop and start working like you said we're yeah. not going into the office for a lot of people we don't have that like same structure um that we had before so it's it's very easy to just start working right after you have you know your cup of coffee or breakfast or whatever mm. and work all the way up until you know even into the evening a lot of people are working now um i'm starting to do this a little bit i hate to admit but you know <laughs> after dinner I, I get back onto my laptop and i'm working until i i go to bed Sleeping i'm trying in. to get better at that so mm. it's it's tough it's it's that reminder that you have to slow down take breaks when you need them get that movement throughout the day yeah totally um, and like I recently watched um, the Earthing movie, and I know you're into all nice. this kind of stuff as well. And yes. I, I mean, you know, it's one of those things that's like, it's instinctive. You know that walking barefoot on the ground and stuff is good for you, right? But watching that movie and kind of hearing the real kind of science behind it and actually seeing mm. case studies and results and, you know, x-rays and things like that to, to show the difference it makes to people's bodies was amazing and so i watched that last week and it was a really good reminder of of how important it really is because a lot of the time especially with these things we might not feel it straight away and it might be such a small feeling that we don't necessarily notice it but when we don't have it we really notice it then so a lot of the time when we're looking after the cells and we're doing all this stuff we can almost take it for granted because we start to feel good Mm -hmm. And then, so we stop doing those things naturally. We kind of like, oh, well, I don't really have to do that anymore because I'm feeling okay now. But as soon as we stop doing those things, we start to feel bad again. And it's almost like a good thing to kind of go through sometimes because you do, you remind yourself as to why you do do these things. And like that with that Earthing movie, um, literally putting your feet on the ground and feeling that and just the the benefits that it was giving and you know you can buy these kind of mats and everything like that i'm i i'm getting myself one of those i after that movie i was sold <laughs> <laughs> yeah it is pretty incredible the science behind it um the big thing for me with something like earthing or really any kind of, um, I like to get more into the idea of hormesis, like those hormetic stressors. We we live in a world where everything is, is so convenient and comfortable, right? Like we just, we're always in a state of comfort for the most part in terms of how we live life. Mm. Um, and when you talk about earthing, you know, most people are wearing shoes 24 seven, or at least, you know, every minute that they're awake we we typically have shoes on if we're not you know um aside from being in the house mm. and, and then people wear slippers it's, yeah right people wear <laughs> slippers and socks and it's like we're constantly cushioning our feet mm. and we're, we're we're losing sight of um that that nature piece of getting back into nature and getting reconnected with the earth and the many benefits that it has for us. So yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan. Mm -hmm. That movie you were talking about, I think um, I think I found it on YouTube. Do you remember where you watched that? Yeah, it was YouTube. Yeah, it's on YouTube. The whole yeah. Movie. So for for people that are um, listening right now and interested, you can you can find that on 
YouTube. I think you, if you just search uh, earthing documentary or earthing. Yeah, movie, I think yeah, just earthing movie up. or something. Yeah, it'll come up. It's a whole movie, so it's. it's I think it's about there. an hour and a half or so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was very interesting and. And like that again, so simple, like literally just even walking on the ground or lying down on it makes such, and when you hear these people's stories of how much of a difference it really makes, you know, to yep. really chronically ill people, it yep. just, I mean, I don't see why you wouldn't do it. You know, you're not, you're not going to do yourself any harm. And along with earthing, just being outside and feeling now that um, the temperatures are starting to warm up. Mm -hmm. um, being outside and have the sun, just feeling the sun hit your body and on your face, it just feels so good. Oh God, uh, it's so good. So... I'm so happy we're coming into the spring now because I, I think as a whole, like we need it. <laughs> yes. After being in this pandemic over winter, we really need it. And we really need it. And yep. I can tell from even just talking to people, like my friends and things like that, people are starting to be naturally in a better mood. Mm -hmm. which is lovely to see. And I even spoke to somebody earlier and she was like, she's trying now to slow down. And she was like, it's the first spring in years that I'm actually noticing the flowers wow. because she was so busy before on autopilot the whole time, not taking any notice of her surroundings. And she was like, I can't even, you know, think of when was the last time I really kind of stopped to notice the flowers around me. That is, that reminds me of the importance of of mindset and it kind of goes back to what we were talking about earlier about being happy i think we often lose sight of how much we're in control of our our mindset our happiness um our thoughts you know i'm a huge believer in the the idea that our our thoughts become our words our words become our actions our actions become our character and who mm -hmm. we are um, so, uh, what are you seeing with people that you're working with as it relates to, you know, improving their health overall, how important is mindset and what are some of the things that you're working on with them to make sure that, that they have that mindset piece, right. And especially as it relates to being consistent, right. And being mm -hmm. sustainable and having this kind of what you mentioned earlier, like this is an approach for the long term, you know, you're not trying to just do quick fixes. Mm. You're trying to get their mindset right so that they can take these tools and everything that they're learning and use it for the rest of their life. Mm. Yeah, it's funny because honestly, it kind of happens instantly. Like as soon as I have the like the discovery call with somebody and I'm telling them about the program and we have a really good chat, it's only about 20 minutes or half an hour. But they have already kind of, and I say it to them, I was like, you've even done really well just to even chat to me and, and to seriously consider this for mm -hmm. yourself. That's a really good step. And when we start, I always do like my initial consultation with them, which can take about two hours, you know, and after it, they always say like, wow, I haven't spoken myself about myself for that long ever and it feels really good and it feels really cathartic for them and and they reveal a lot that they haven't thought about in years I'll ask them certain questions that might trigger something and be like oh actually yes no I did suffer with that or that did happen to me and maybe actually this is why this is now happening and they haven't made the connection before mm. um so instantly I think once they start that process and they know they're doing something to look after themselves, yep. their mindset has changed. And I often get told that I'm in people's ears. So I might have my weekly session with them and during the week I might get a message off of them and they're like, I was in the shop and you were there in my ear and you know, telling me about all these things. And so they were, they're reminding themselves of what I've kind of told them and they're being, they start to really be like aware of what's going on and in tune with how they're feeling. And that's one of the huge things that I kind of work with them in terms of mindset, because when we're busy, we are often on autopilot and we're not in tune with how we're actually feeling. We don't realize until we stop mm -hmm. that actually we might have a sore back or that we might have a bit of a pain in our neck or mm -hmm. we've been clenching our jaw. So actually our jaw is really sore. Um, we're not in tune with those things. We 
our bodies are amazing. We can kind of almost put mind over matter and get on with our busy day without really noticing them of how, how we actually feel. And so that's a huge thing that I first get them to do with a food diary, right? Because food diaries seem like such a chore. And as soon as I say food diary to someone, they're like, oh, God. Um, but when I explain the benefits of actually doing it, they they realize, OK, no, this is actually something I really need to do. And it is important because as soon as people start kind of like noting it down and writing down how they're feeling after they've eaten something or before they've eaten something or even noticing how they feel, um, you know, before they go to bed or when they wake up or you know, even something to like, even their bowel movements and stuff, like a lot of the time, we can often think that we're okay, or that we're mm -hmm. doing better than we actually are. And when we start writing it down, we can notice like, oh, maybe I'm actually not doing so good. And maybe actually, sure. I'm, I'm feeling worse than I thought I was. Um, so from day one, we, we work on stuff like that. And just that being in tune, really, mm -hmm. really helps because it kind of they start to realize, actually, I really need to do something about this. Yeah, it's almost like a, a snowball effect that when you start doing something like a, a food diary or food journal, and start paying attention to things like your bowel movement, stuff that like we might kind of see and like maybe take a mental note, but then we just kind of let it go to the wayside and then we don't take action. Um, when you start getting into that, that mindset and that framework of just taking note of little things, then you start building up some momentum of making improvements and um, making real change for your, your body, for your health. And I think that's where it gets really exciting is when you can have that momentum and then just let that carry you forward mm -hmm. into doing some really cool, real, really cool stuff for your health. Yeah. Yeah. And like I, when I first started studying, one of the first, first things, first assignments that we had to do just to kind of get us into it, you know, we, we were asked to do a food diary. And by that point, I was, I thought I was quite aware of what I was doing. And mm -hmm. it was only when I was writing it down that I noticed every time I had my breakfast and like, I always have porridge, um, unless it's a really nice sunny day, then I might have like granola, but it's basically oat based. Um, mm -hmm. Every time I had porridge, I did not feel well, like my tummy was not happy with me. And I was noting this down and I was like, oh man, like, I'm going to be told that I can't eat porridge anymore. And that's going to be really sad because I love it. <laughs> and so I spoke to my tutor and I was like, yeah, I think I'm like allergic to oats or something. And he was just like, are you drinking anything in the morning before you have your breakfast? And I said, no, I, cause I wake up starving. So I go straight to my breakfast when I get up. And he was like, so basically, you haven't drank anything the whole time you've been sleeping. So eight hours, roughly. And you're getting up and you're putting a load of porridge into your body when your body is dehydrated. <laughs> it's like, yes, that is what I'm doing, actually. So he was like, try drinking a glass of warm water and lemon mm. in the morning, 15 minutes, 20 minutes before you have your breakfast and see how you feel. And yeah. as soon as I started doing that, I didn't have the pain in my tummy anymore. And thank God I was not <laughs> allergic to oats like I thought I was. Um, sure. And that changed, that really did change it. So every morning now I have my lemon uh, water um, without fail and just yep. to get everything going. And that's one of the main things I get my, one of the first things I get my clients to do as well, because not a lot of people do that. And they head straight towards right. the coffee or they skip breakfast totally and and they're dehydrated and they don't have anything before they get to work and then they get the coffee yeah. or something. So it's a it's a really good way to, to start your day. Yeah, it's a game changer. Hydration is is so big. I was one of those people that would wake up and go right to the coffee and I, I still enjoy my coffee. I have at least one cup a day, uh, sometimes two, maybe three, depending on um, <laughs> this week. It's depending on three. the day. <laughs> this week it's been three. Yeah. Um, but for for a while, I mean, for several years, first thing, cup of coffee and no water until later on in the day. Mm -hmm. And then I was learning more about the importance of hydrating 
right away, the minute we wake up, you know, so that's the first, the very first thing I do after making my bed is I come down and I pour a glass of water Mm -hmm. um, and I make sure I have at least one, if not two glasses of water before I even touch coffee. Um, Yeah. It's really, like I said, a game changer. Yeah, it really is. And it's something so simple. And it's, um, once you start getting into it, you can't imagine not doing it. I can't imagine now just getting up and eating a bowl of porridge because I know it's going to make me, you know, it's not going to do anything for me. So yeah, right. it's uh, it's a good thing to do for sure. Yeah. I'd like to cover, um, we haven't really talked much about sleep. I think the, the word has been brought up once or twice in the conversation, but where or what are you seeing with, with your clients um, in terms of sleep? You know, I would imagine that the folks you're working with when they face burnout um, and just the the lifestyle that they're living that might be chaotic and very busy and stressful and heavy workload, it probably leads to some sleep issues, right? You know, it's <laughs> yeah. if you have stress, you're, you're probably not going to be sleeping great or you might be working into into the wee hours of the morning or waking up early. And like we were talking about earlier, um, opening up at your laptop right away. Mm. So what are some things you're seeing with the, the clients that you're working with, um, in terms of, of poor sleep and what are some of the things that you're recommending to at least make some small adjustments for better sleep? Yeah. So a lot so far, anyway, a lot of the people that I've worked for, they own their own businesses. Um, there's been a couple of people now who kind of work sort of, um, quite high kind of demanding jobs, but Mm -hmm. one of the things that I have noticed with people is that they are answering emails when they're in bed. So they've got their phone or their laptop, whatever it is, their iPad, and they have access. And you know, when you see an email coming in, you can't help but check it, you know, you're kind (laughs) of like, just in case it's important or something like that. And we kind of have this access and people know that we have this access and we don't have that boundary in place where we just say, I am not available at this time. Do not expect an email back from me at half 10 at night Um, because we're on the go the whole time. So we think, oh, well, we'll just answer this and it'll be fine. But so that's one of the first things that I kind of try to work with people is setting that boundary and having Mm -hmm. some Because, you know, especially if you run your own business, sometimes you do have to check just in case. Um, But having that boundary of perhaps not replying, not feeling like you have to reply. um, And, you know, preferably just not even bringing it, you know, into the bedroom or, you know, before you go to sleep, just not checking it, taking notifications off or something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, What happens to a lot of people is that they tell me that they sleep but they wake up exhausted and this is this is very common and it's because when we go to sleep we're so tired that we can go to go to bed and as soon as our head hits the pillow we're asleep so we think i'm gonna get a good night's sleep because i'm so exhausted but because (laughs) we've been on the go all the time and we're working up until like you said the wee hours and then our head hits the pillow our body isn't rested And so, yeah, we're sleeping, but we're not really rested. Our body hasn't wound down yet. So when we're waking up, it's almost like we haven't slept at all. So I really put an importance on an evening routine and really starting from, for example, not drinking caffeine after like two o'clock, having your dinner and winding down and you know, not taking things out totally. So, you know, people still watch, you know, binge watch shows and things like that. But I just kind of say, instead of binge watching, maybe just watch one episode, like really try to like, you know, and you know, I can never force anybody to do things, but it's, it's going to really benefit them. Perhaps maybe bringing a book, you know, buying themselves a new book and going to bed and reading that book and, Mm -hmm. using like essential oils in the bedroom so I have next to my bed I have lavender next to my bed and I just always put little drops on my pillow um I have like a kind of calming spray um with a few kind of different essential oils in it um I also have like my rescue remedy and I have my book and everything by the bed just so I can properly relax and even doing that kind of psychologically even if it's like a placebo effect you kind of know you're telling yourself 
you are winding down and you are yes. becoming relaxed. Instead of going work, work, work at the laptop, okay, put the laptop down, head hits the pillow. Um, mm. And just when people kind of realize the importance of doing that, because if they don't get that quality sleep, they wake up exhausted, they're groggy, and then they're trying to work and it just kind of snowballs and they end up being so less efficient. Uh, the productivity, you know, levels are way lower. They've got this brain fog. They're, they're even trying, you know, they're finding it hard to find the words, to even explain something to somebody in a meeting or, um, you know, a task might be thrown at them from out of the blue and they cannot handle it because their brain isn't functioning properly to be able to deal with it. And mm. sleeping it's so simple and we really need it, but so many of us just really take it for granted as if it's a thing yeah. that we can kind of skip and it's and it's not. Um, so I really put an importance on that for sure. Yeah. yeah. I'm a big fan of no screens in the bedroom because like you said, if you have, whether it's TV or um, especially a laptop, you know, I'm, I'm not so strict on no TV in, in the bedroom, but it probably shouldn't be in the bedroom but especially not your work laptop. Um, if you're in your, laying in your bed or sitting in your bed working, you're training your brain that that's a place that you work. Mm. And it should be the opposite, right? You should be training your brain to know that your bed is for strictly for either sleep or sex, and that's it. Mm. Um, and too often we do the opposite. We bring our laptops in and have our phone and I'm not perfect with my phone. I, I do admit oh, sometimes I have my phone. So yeah, sometimes um, it does. It does happen. Yeah. Yeah. But it's about being aware and knowing that, okay, I cannot have my phone too much in, in the bed and definitely no no work laptop. Mm -hmm. um, and that I'm was also one of my big of... things was the laptop. I, w I was yes. one of those people bringing my laptop to, I even had like a proper thing to put like on my bed so I could work. Yeah. And right. I actually, I got rid of that because I was like, if I have this, that encourages me. So yeah, I gave that to a charity shop. <laughs> yeah, there you go. And I'm sure you're not alone. I'm sure during you know, working from home during quarantine, um, I'm sure a lot of people found themselves getting into the habit of, uh, you know, their work laptop in the bed. Mm. Oh yeah. Cause for some habit. people it's a novelty as well, you know, especially early on in the pandemic, I think it was like, Oh, I can kind of do this Ooh, from I my bed. Kind of, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a bad bad habit to get into. I'm also a big fan of uh, the evening routine. I feel like so many people talk about morning routines, mm. which is great. I love a good morning routine, but um, the evening routine tends to get neglected. Mm. And um, there was something interesting. This was a few months back. Um, Brendan Burchard, he's a big like self-development personality. I think I saw on his Instagram, he posted... Um, he calls it like the three, two, one rule where three hours before bed to stop eating. And that's just to allow your digestive system to, to rest before you mm. hit the pillow. Uh, two hours before bed, no work. So stop your work before, you know, the two hours before you go to bed. And then one hour before bed, no screens. So that's where you would turn off the phone, at least not bring it into your bed and, um, I think that's just a good kind of general kind of framework mm. to ease into that evening routine and allow your brain to just like naturally shut down and, and rest. Mm. So well, yeah, because you are, you're neat. training your body to rest. And then by the time yeah. you actually do go to sleep, your body is rested and you're going to get that quality night's sleep. And a lot of people um, find themselves waking up at like three in the morning, three or four in the morning when they're super stressed yeah. and they wonder why. And it's, it's again, it's our, it's our rhythm of the day is getting so messed up because right. when it comes to the evening, we're supposed to be winding down, but we're not. So our body still thinks it's kind of the daytime and yeah. our, our kind of cortisol levels are going to be high. And then when we're trying to get to sleep, our body is like, okay, it's time to do something again. So our cortisol is like waking us up at like three in the morning and we wake up and we're in a bit of a panic and a bit of a flurry. We go yeah. back to sleep and when we wake up, we still have that cortisol. We have that dread in our brains and we're like, oh my God, another day. I have to get through this another day. And yeah, so even training yourself to not be that person who wakes up at three in the morning panicking 
is huge because that was that was a really bad thing that I that I suffered from before yeah. I still do sometimes you know when things kind of get on top of me you know but then that catches me and I'm like oh okay you know I need to slow down again or I need to make some mm. changes again because naturally I think we start you know once we start feeling good we feel like we can maybe take more on and we kind of mm. get into that kind of hamster wheel again and then something happens and it reminds us which is good it reminds us that no we need to go back to looking after ourselves again and and doing something differently so yeah it's, exactly. it's really important that evening routine for sure yeah. absolutely kind of uh i guess encompassing everything that we've talked about today um i like to to ask some of my guests that i have on um, their de definition of health so my question is, what does health mean to you? So um, health really is, it's a really broad term, isn't it? It can mean so many things like we were talking about earlier, the, even the financial health relationships, um, you know, occupational health, um, physical yep. health, mental health. So it really is kind of like an umbrella to so many things. But to me, it really means kind of doing doing things consistently that make you feel good, um, being excited and being interested as well. And mm. so, you know, for example, like kind of consistently eating things like highly processed foods, sitting on the sofa, watching Netflix, um, you know, reading the news, especially, you know, these days, that's not going to make you feel good. When you're doing that consistently, you're going to get into a cycle that's not making you feel good. Yes. But by, you know, cooking with like whole foods or, you know, going on a hike or, you know, listening to like a really uplifting podcast, those things are going to make you feel good. So mm. a lot of us think, okay, health equals food, which food is a big part of it but it's also the other things that you're doing in your life. You can be mm. having the best diet in the world, but you know, if you're super stressed and you're, you're having no relaxation time, you're not moving, you're not gonna be healthy. Or you could be the opposite. You could be somebody who's like super fit, mm. running all these marathons and stuff, but if you're actually not looking after your body and, and eating well, you're still not gonna be healthy. So it's really kind of encompassing everything um, taking that 360 kind of holistic approach to health. Um, that's kind of what health really means to me. And, you know, like I was kind of mentioning earlier, really about being happy as well, you know, health and happiness, they, they, they kind of come hand in hand and they complement each other. Yes. I love that. It's so true. They definitely, they definitely coexist. And I also think that, you know, one of the neatest things about health that I'm learning along the way is how interconnected everything is. Um, you know, for all of the reasons that you, you just mentioned, if you're going to have good sleep, you have to have good nutrition as well and, and movement and healthy relationships. It's that, that holistic approach mm. that I think we, we both appreciate. Mm, yeah. You can't really do one without doing the other and cause you won't feel the benefits otherwise. Yes, exactly. That's great. Phoebe, before I get to my last few questions, um, I'd like for you to have uh, the chance to talk a little bit more about your Healthy Happy program. Um, and then also, where can people find you to learn more about you? Yeah, so, um, well, people can find me. I have a website, which is phoebewebnutrition.ie. Um, I'm on Instagram mostly, and um, that's kind of my biggest platform, I think. And I'm at bb underscore web underscore nutrition. Um, I'm also on Facebook and LinkedIn, but yeah, Instagram's kind of my biggest one. Um, cool. I, what was the first question you said? Uh, the Healthy Happy program. Oh, yes, my program, yeah. I think you have a few spots open still. Yeah, so I've got two two spots um, left at the moment, um, which is really exciting. And it's an eight-week program. Um, and it's kind of based on kind of what we were just talking about, really. So it's um, everything is kind of personalized and tailored to each individual's needs. So... I don't have anything written, pre-written. Everything mm -hmm. is written from scratch when I meet somebody. And 
we look at, but there is that structure of looking at those four pillars that I mentioned earlier. So we look at diet, stress, um, movement and lifestyle. And we have that kind of initial consultation to get all that information from them. And, and we go through it step by step. So it can kind of sound overwhelming, even if I'm talking about it today, it might sound a bit overwhelming, but when it's broken down into steps that are totally manageable and bearing in mind, I work with busy women. So they're done in such a way that they can actually incorporate it into their lives. And I really mm -hmm. focus on starting small, starting simple, but really effectively by being consistent with it. And if they can commit to the small things at the beginning, it means that we can grow and we can build on the other things. So by, you know, it depends really on what their goals and their concerns are, but mm -hmm. everyone towards the end of the eight weeks they're really on their way, if not achieve some of those things, depending on what they are. Um, and everyone, and I like to kind of really educate people as well when I'm going through stuff. So I don't just say, you know, you need to move or something like I explain why and I explain why particularly for them, it would be good because they might be suffering with certain things. Mm -hmm. And so there's a bit of a discussion there, a bit of education there. And I think that really helps with people when, they're doing something like this because then it means that they're going to continue doing it because they know why they're doing it as well. So, yeah, so it's quite, um, it's a very kind of in-depth program um, mm -hmm. for people. I really look at the root causes of things. You know, as a health coach, that's my job is to not band-aid over stuff. It's to really look at the root cause um, and to really personalize things for their tailored kind of needs. And you know, looking at, you know, things like food first, you know, rather than trying to think of, um, you know, like pills or anything like that to kind of cover up things, really kind of trying to heal stuff with food, with your lifestyle mm. um, and with your movement and your stress management. Yeah, I love that. That's great. My last question I have for you, Phoebe. Um, oh, and by the way, so people can go onto your website and learn more about that program if they're interested in yeah 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 totally and if they if they want to kind of even just have a chat with me because mm -hmm. sometimes when we're kind of reading stuff like this no matter how I, how much i kind of write and edit it i always find i'm better explaining it like on the phone to people um Definitely. so but i have a contact form on my on my website and then you know they can obviously you know send me a direct message on instagram as well Perfect. That sounds good. Um, the last question I'd like to ask, and I think we've probably covered this quite a bit in our conversation is around, you know, who you are trying to impact the most. Um, and I know you've talked about um, people that are just so busy and feel like they're burnt out and at a point where they maybe um, are just looking for answers and they don't know what else to do. Um, so maybe it's them, but if it's anybody else, who is it that you really want to impact the most with the work that you do? Yeah, um, I think, I mean, predominantly, like, it, it is, it's women. I want to impact women, and I want to help them to really put an importance on themselves. Um, mm. Because like I was kind of saying earlier, especially if you're someone who has a family, you naturally and, and instinctively put them first, you know, before your mm. own needs. And I'm there to kind of remind them. And actually, when I speak to some women, you know, they really talk about how they've they've lost themselves. They've lost their identity. They are the wife. They are the mother. They are the person in their job. They are the, you know, the businesswoman. But they're kind of, they've lost part of themselves that they used to know and actually when I kind of ask people, you know, what, what is your goal? You know, they say things like weight loss, whatever it is, but they also say, I just want to feel like myself again, which mm. I think is really powerful. Um, and when we kind of, I kind of remind them that like, when we start looking after ourselves, we really start looking after everyone else and everything else much better. So, um, you know, if you're thinking in terms of, you know, if you run your own business or you're in this kind of high demanding job, 
you're going to really look after that business or that job by looking after yourself. They're going to, it's going to come hand in hand. Um, and just kind of reminding people of that and the importance of it. And because when, when we're busy, our health and well-being is more important than ever. And um, there's this quote that I, that I love and that I always kind of refer back to. Um, I actually don't know who says it. I, I should look it up. And I could be paraphrasing this quote totally, but it's, um, you, it says you should sit in meditation for 20 minutes every day unless you're too busy, then you should sit for an hour. And I really believe that like this kind of underlying message of this quote, like should not only be taken like really into consideration, but really acted upon like every day. So mm. if you think, oh, well, I'm, I'm too busy to do this and I'm too busy to do that, but they're the things that are gonna help you to be more efficient and more productive so that you're not so busy, then you should be doing it. But we we tend to put it to the wayside and we tend, a lot of us kind of think that we're getting away with it as well. Like I spoke to somebody earlier and she was like, oh, I've kind of been getting away with, you know, doing all this stuff, but now it's kind of creeping up on me. And and I was like, yeah, you think you're getting away with it, but but you're not. <laughs> right. Our bodies can turn this like that kind of mind over matter thing. We think we're getting away with things, but it'll, it'll show up eventually. <laughs> yes, so true. So true. I love that quote. It's it's uh, it's very telling. It's great, um, isn't it? It kind of really shows that actually, no, it's it's important to slow down and to look after yourself. Because if you don't, then what you're building and what you're acting really busy for isn't going to matter when when you're not healthy and when you're not functioning. Mm, so true. That's so true. I love that. That's a really good reminder for all of us is to slow down and to make sure we're taking care of ourselves and that we're focusing on the important things like we've been talking about is our health and our happiness. Yeah, and, and the important and thing is that... to know that it, it helps with what you want to achieve. So it's not about slowing down so much that you, you stop reaching towards that career goal or you stop building your business. It's actually to help you reach those goals. So resting is really productive. Looking after yourself is productive and it, is, it mm. will make you more efficient it will clear that brain fog, <laughs> you know, it will, it will help you have those, that energy that you need to tackle the day. So it's actually to enhance those goals. It's not to take away from them at all. Yes. So true. Amazing. Well, Phoebe, this has been a really incredible conversation. I, I've enjoyed everything that we've talked about oh, um, and getting to know you better. It's really been a joy. It's been so great. I love it. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, absolutely. My pleasure. All right. Well, thanks so much and you have a great day. You too. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.